Hello everyone, hope you're well and welcome back to my Explore Edinburgh series. I really hope you enjoyed the first three episodes which are now available in a separate YouTube playlist. Thank you to everybody who subscribed, your support really keeps me going and I hope you get real value from my videos while visiting Edinburgh. A wee bit of news, I've just launched a brand new website with a free guide to my top 100 things to see and do in Edinburgh. I'll link to it in the description. The list is on the homepage so you don't need to sign up to see it. I really hope you'll find it useful and you'll, I'll update it regularly. I'm also writing up a similar guide for Scotland's other cities for subscribers only. I also have a brand new old time walking tour which you can book online via my new website. It's very affordable and lasts two hours and I offer a money back guarantee if you're not happy in any way. I'll show you all my favourite places in the old town and there'll be time afterwards for a good chat about all the other places you should see in Edinburgh along with lots of personal recommendations and tips. I'm limiting numbers to just a handful of people so that it's more personal and you have more time to ask questions. I've lived in Edinburgh for almost 50 years and I hope you'll find the locals' perspective really interesting. So now on to today's location. The Venel is a stepped passageway joining the Grass Market and Heriot Place. It's very easily missed by visitors, which is a shame as it offers one of the most photogenic spots in the city, particularly for the castle. The entrance from the Grass Market is opposite the Fiddler's Arms pub, where the Grass Market meets the West Port. It's about a 15 minute walk from Waverley Station, but please note that the steps are fairly steep and anyone with mobility problems would be advised to drive up Heriot Place from Lauriston Place and approach it from the top. The views of the castle on a fine day like this are just superb and it's one of the best angles for shooting the castle's Half Moon Battery. If you're keen for a great shot, wait until the evening for the old gas lamppost to light up and use the staircase as a leading line. At the bottom of the steps, you'll see a sign saying the Miss Jean Brodie steps, which I note is missing just now. Hopefully it will be returned soon. This was installed in 2018 to celebrate the centenary of the birth of the Edinburgh-born author Dame Muriel Spark. She was born in Brunsfield and went to James Gillespie's High School for Girls. She wrote the wonderful The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie, which I can thoroughly recommend to anybody interested in the city's literary history and culture. I studied it when I was at high school and there's a film of the book made in 1969 starring Dame Maggie Smith in which the Venel features. It's well worth a watch and I'd love to know if you've read the book or seen the film. If you continue to the top of the Venel, you'll find a very interesting ruined wall and watchtower called the Flodden Wall and Tower. You can find remnants of it appearing throughout the old time. It's over a metre thick and in some places was over seven metres high. On its completion in 1560, it contains an area of around 140 acres with an astonishing 10,000 people living within its boundaries. It was quite a squeeze and sanitary conditions were really poor within the walls. There's also another defensive wall here called the Telfer Wall, but I'll cover that in another video. Edinburgh was a walled city for much of the 15th to 17th centuries, but there would almost certainly have been previous walls dating back to the 12th century, although it's unlikely they were made of stone. Three defensive walls were built from the 15th to the 17th centuries to protect the old town. The Flodden Wall in the 16th century, the Kings in the 15th century, and the Telfer in the 17th century. I'll put a map up here so you can see their locations.
The Flodden Wall was the biggest wall and ran from this point to where the Pleasance and Waverley Station are now, with just the odd section still remaining today. The Flodden Wall was built between 1514 and 1560, primarily to protect the suburbs of the Cowgate and Grassmarket from a feared English invasion after the fierce Battle of Flodden in 1513. James IV of Scotland was heavily beaten and killed in this battle by Henry VIII, and the town council much feared a takeover from the English after the battle, although this never actually transpired. The wall ran all the way down the Venel to join the West Port and up what is now called Granny Steps. There's still a remnant of the wall at Granny Steps and built into adjacent buildings. Westport was a city gateway which used to exist at the bottom of the steps at the entrance to the grass market. Westport was built in 1514 and belonged to a series of six city ports upon which it was common to see the heads of executed criminals. A rather gruesome thought. If you look closely you can see the line of the wall and old city gates marked on the pavement leading to dance space over the road, which actually has another section of the old wall within its reception area. Other places you can see remnants of the old Flodden Wall are in Greyfriars Kirkyard and just opposite the Pleasance. There's not much of the King's Wall left, but you can see a part of it in Tweeddale Court, which is one of the Royal Mile's loveliest closes. As mentioned, the walls had a number of ports, essentially gatehouses, the most significant being the Netherby Port, a fortified gateway which was located adjacent to where the World's End pub is now on the Royal Mile. Looking right at you, I didn't want to Leave before the sun came Without looking for it, fell into your orbit Stayed under your influence Stay on my mind It was demolished in 1764, but there's still a stone plaque in the wall near the spot and brass bricks in the street showing its precise location. A lot of the cobbles are being replaced just now, but I hope the brass bricks showing its location will be replaced soon. None of the walls were particularly successful from a defensive point of view, but the city ports were great for collecting taxes and controlling trade in and out of the city. If you've ever wondered how the World's End pub on the Royal Mile got its name, it's simply that the Netherby port was indeed the end of the world for many poorer citizens, who couldn't afford to pay the toll to enter the Cannon Gate, which was a completely separate borough from the city at the time. The ports were never very effective defensively. In 1544, the Netherby port gates were blown open by an English force led by the Earl of Hertford during the Eight Year War of Rough Wooing, wooing rather, when the English tried to break the old alliance between Scotland and France and to force a marriage between Edward, the son and heir of Henry VIII, and Mary Queen of Scots. The city was badly burnt during the attack and took some time to recover. The Netherby port was also where the Jacobite forces entered the city in 1745 after rushing the gates on its opening for business one unsuspecting morning. Although volunteers had been recruited for the defence of the city, the gate was unmanned on this eventful morning and the city was captured easily by Bonnie Prince Charlie and his troops. The walls are now protected as scheduled monuments and a very important and fascinating part of the city's history.
While you're visiting the Venel, I highly recommend getting some ice cream from Mary's Milk Bar. It's located just at the foot of the steps and makes the best ice cream in the city. Mary makes the ice cream herself and there are different flavours every day. On a sunny day, I like to sit on the grass at Granny's Steps and enjoy my ice cream in the sun. A short walk from the Venel in Westport is the popular bookshop Armchair Books. It sells lots of unusual and rare second-hand books and is a fascinating place to browse in. It is a tiny place and can get busy, so try and go early if you can. Take me back to the nights we felt alive Picking up the pieces on a summer night I didn't know that I would feel just like my heart's on fire Whenever I'm with you Cause we go back in time to Tucked away between the top of the Royal Mile and Victoria Street You'll find the cosy and welcoming Hideout Cafe They do brilliant coffee and cakes And I love that they still play old cassette tapes The staff are really friendly And you can always take away if it's busy when you're outside the cafe, have a look for the ghost signs outside. It's amazing how often you see these around Edinburgh. I'd really like to give a shout out to some super talented Edinburgh friends who I wholeheartedly recommend you follow on YouTube. I'll put links to their channels in the description below. First off is Romana and Ewan who produce wonderful, beautifully filmed travel vlogs, many from Scotland. They are incredibly kind, generous and talented people and I know you'll absolutely love their vlogs. Secondly is Kat and Simon at Kakibot. Kat is an extremely talented designer and illustrator and they produce really informative, beautiful vlogs about life in Edinburgh and the rest of the world. Third is Swift Films. Richard is a super talented filmmaker and producer in Edinburgh and makes the most amazing films around productivity, fitness and life here in the city. He's a really lovely person too. And lastly, but not least, is the incredible Scottish pop band, The Eves. Marissa and Caroline write and perform some of the best pop tunes you'll ever hear, and I cannot recommend them highly enough. They're based right here in Edinburgh and such lovely people, and I know you'll absolutely love them. I really hope you'll show all these amazing Edinburgh creators some love and enjoy watching their channels. I know a new subscription would mean a lot to all of them. Really hope you've enjoyed this video and that it's given you some new information on Edinburgh and where to visit. Please do check out my other Explore Edinburgh videos and please don't hesitate to ask if you have any questions about visiting Edinburgh or booking my tours. Oh, and don't forget to visit my website for my top 100 places to visit in and around Edinburgh, which I hope you'll find really useful. I'll provide a link to it in the description. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to watch my previous videos and to subscribe for part five. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.